Doki okely doke. Here we go. 4.3 mixed radicals and entire radicals. This is basically what we're going to call simplifying radicals. Okay. Uh, and it's not necessarily always simplifying radicals, but it's being able to go back and forth. Sometimes you want an entire radical, sometimes you want a mixed radical. Now an entire radical, okay, so let's look at an entire radical, would be something like uh, the square root of 20, okay? And a mixed radical would be something like 2 root 5. Okay, now there's multiplication going on between the 2 and the 5, okay, if you want to put brackets around it, you're more than welcome to do that. Now, uh, a couple things we need to know, first of all, okay, if you're going to do this, you need to know what we call your perfect squares and your perfect cubes. So if you haven't written this down yet, okay, you should have that in front of you somewhere, maybe even some perfect powers of four, just the first three or four. Um, I'm taking this away right now. If you want to write it down, if you haven't written it down, you can do it by yourselves because you should be able to do one squared, two squared, three squared, all the way up to 10 squared cubed. Well, you have a calculator, take a guess in your head and then uh, check on your calculator, okay? Uh, before we continue again, what I, uh, what I want to do is show you a couple properties or rules. Uh, and one of those is what we call the multiplication property. Okay, and one of them is what we call the division property. And uh, we've already looked at the division property, uh, saw it yesterday, or whatever day that was, okay? And what it is, is this, that if you have um, the nth root, we'll just use the nth root to represent any root, right, of x over y, that means that it's the same as taking the root of the top over the root of the bottom. You can split them up that way, okay? now. What I need to understand as well is that this is a two-way street. You can go this way, and if you have the same uh, index, you can go that way as well. The multiplication property, you can imagine, is kind of the same thing, right? If I have the square root of xy, uh, I, or the cube root of the fourth root, I can break that into the square root or nth root of x uh, times the nth root of y. Now, please uh, understand also that this symbol right here is the same as times, okay? Just that dot. Now, there's a bunch of different ways we can do multiplication. We can use brackets like we got up here. You can use the multiplication sign. You can use uh, a dot, or even if you just have a number in front of a bracket or a radical, that's also multiplication, okay? So those are two different properties that we're going to be using, okay? Now, I'm just gonna jump into a bunch of examples here and uh, hopefully you can make some sense of it. Okay, if I asked you to do, for example, the square root of 40, okay, what you need to do is see if you can break this up into two factors, okay? One of them, so look, 40 is made up of lots of factors, right? There's, um, let's slide it over here. There's 40 times one, there's 20 times two, there's 10 times four, there's eight times five. These are all numbers that multiply to give you 40. Do you see any of these that are a perfect square, right? Any of these factors at all that are a perfect square? Well, hopefully you can see that the four is. So what we can do is we can break down the 40 into four times 10, right? There you go. So here we have an entire radical, right? A whole radical. What we're trying to do is turn it into a mixed radical. So we break the 40 up into two factors, one of them being a perfect square, because the rule here tells us that I can now um, multiply them separately like this. And then if you've got the square root of 4 on its own, the square root of 4 actually has a value. It's 2. And then we just go 2 root 10. And boom, you're done. All right? Let's have a uh, square root of 63. Okay? So now let's look at 63. There's going to be 63 times 1, uh, 21 times 3, uh, 7 times 9. Any of those look like perfect squares, right? Hopefully you'll see it's the 9, so we can break this up into 9 times 7. Notice I put the perfect square first so that it always ends up at the front. Uh, it doesn't matter what order it's in. But when we rewrite it, the uh, number that we take the square root of, which ends up being the coefficient or whatever you want to call it, always stays up front. We do not write uh, 10 root 2 
or to root 10 times 2, okay? We do not write it this way. All right, we always put the number in front of the radical. So, square root of 9 times 7, because 9 times 7 is 63. 9 is a perfect square. You break it up, square root of 9 times the square root of 7. The square root of 9 is 3. Boom, there you go. All right, now we got to think about something else here. Let's try the cube root of 40. Okay, so now you look at perfect cubes of 40. And here are our numbers. And then you have your list of perfect cubes, right? Have your list of perfect cubes. Find a perfect cube that's in here. Okay, hopefully you'll see that it's 8. So I'm going to go 8 times 5 cube root of, right? Which is equal to the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 5, which ends up being just 2 cube root of 5. Now the problem here lies sometimes people is that if you look at this thing here, let's look at something. If I give you the cube root uh, two times the cube root of five, what might you get confused here, okay? Have a look at this and see what might cause some confusion. And in my opinion, it could be a question of this. Is it two cubed square root of five or is it two times the cube root of five, right? Now in this case that we just did here, which of these versions is it? I'm hoping that you see that it's this one. So if you want to clarify, why not just put brackets around that and make it absolutely clear so there's no confusion, all right? So let's look at basically just a few more examples. Uh, I'll write them down for you. You guys can plug away at them. Okay, so we'll start off with, what do we do here? Uh, how about we go the square root of, I don't know, 60? That's a pretty easy one. We can go the cube root of 90. That's a pretty easy one. How about the cube root of 108? How about the fourth root of uh, 32? Let's see if we can figure these out, all right? So these are both cube roots. I'll try and make it a little bit clearer. Okay, so now... Look at your list of perfect squares, okay? You should have them in front of you. You should have this list in front of you, okay? Now, look at 60, and you look at all the numbers that factor out, or that multiply to give you 60, right? It's going to be 30 times 2, and it's going to be 20 times 3, and it's going to be 15 times 4, and it's going to be, uh, well, you know what? It's in there already, so hopefully you'll see that the 4 is a perfect square, so 4 times 15, the square root of 4 times the square root of 15 equals 2 root 15, all right? 90, 90 times 10, oh, that's not going to work, is there a perfect, I don't know if there's a perfect cube in there, 90 times 1, 45 times 2, uh, 90 times, 9 times 10, uh, 15, times six. Yeah, none of those are a perfect cube. So actually you can't do this. Okay, because there's no perfect cube. Don't get suckered into thinking that it's nine because that is a perfect square, not a perfect cube, all right? Let's get rid of these so I have some room. Okay, now the cube root of 108. Well, let's write them out. 108 times one, 54 times two, 27 times uh, four. Uh, those will probably do. Now, which one of those numbers is a perfect cube? And hopefully you'll see that it ends up being 27 times 4, which is the cube root, sorry. So it's the cube root of 27 times the cube root of 4, which ends up being 3 cube root of 4. All right, last one before we go to the next step. Uh, perfect powers of 4. Now, we don't have these right here. I don't have them right here. So let's do them. 2 to the power of 4 is 16. 3 to the power of 4 is 81. That's all you need. If you can do this, it's got to be one of these numbers. Hopefully you can see that it's the fourth root of 16, and that's going to be times 2, which is the fourth root of 16 times the fourth root of 2, which equals 2 times the fourth root of 2. So I've done, what, seven examples here, guys. There's plenty in your book. If you want more examples, um, come and talk to me and we will sort it out, okay?
the next thing we need to look at is going from mixed radicals back into their original form. Okay, now hopefully you can see that if you want this to go back in here, since this is a square root, this thing has to be squared to go back in. And indeed, if you look over here, look, 2 squared is 4, and then 4 times 10, 40. Put this back in here. It's squared, so 3 squared is 9. 9 times 7 is 63. 2. In order to put it back in here, it's got to be cubed to put it back in. 2 cubed is 8. 8 times 5 is 40, right? Here, 2. This is a square root, so 2 squared back in, right? 2 squared is 4. 4 times 15, 60, right? So let's just have a look at a couple of these questions. Let's see if we can go from mixed radicals, mixed back to entire radicals, okay? So let's look at, for example, 4 root 3, okay? And this is the square root. So if you want to put it back in there, you got to go 4 squared, right? So let's do the whole process here a couple of times. So it's going to be... The square root of 4 squared is just 4, right? So I just put it into the square root symbol so that I could end up combining it with this other root, right? So 4 squared is 16 times root 3. Now you get 16 times 3 gives you 48. Boom, you're done. And hopefully if you got the square root of 48, you'd be able to come back and go this way as well, okay? Uh, let's look at another one. How about... 3 root 5, okay? Give that one a shot. You want to put it back in there. So what are you going to do? 3 squared because it's square root. So that's going to be the square root of 9 times the square root of 5, which is the square root of 45 because we multiply these two together, all right? Well, you can imagine that it's going to be kind of the same thing if I have this, right? Cube root. 2 cube root of 5. So if you want to put the 2 back in, you actually have to cube it, right? So let's write out the whole thing. Cube root of 2 cubed, right? Because that's going to be 2 times the cube root of 5, okay? So that's going to be the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 5, which is the cube root of 40. Now it's quite interesting that these all ended up being in the 40s somehow. I don't even know if that's a thing. It just is what it is. Numbers I chose, I guess. Let's try something different. Okay, let's try three. Let's make it a little more tricky. Fourth root of three. No, that's not going to work. Not the three inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so what the heck are we going to do here? Well, I want to put it back in here. It's got to be the fourth root, so it's got to be power of four. So we're going to have the fourth root of... 3 to the power of 4, because that's 3, right, times the fourth root of 3, which is equal to the fourth root of 3 to the power of 4, 3, uh, 9, 27, 81, right? So 81 times the fourth root of 3, which is going to end up giving you the fourth root of 2, 43, because we multiply these two numbers together. That, ladies and gentlemen, is section 4.3, mixed radicals, entire radicals, okay? It's all about manipulating important rules. Make sure you have all these written down, and it shouldn't be a problem. Have a nice day.